So hey guys, um, I wanted to make this short tutorial on probabilities and the things that I use to make particles take a condition gradually, uh, you know, getting influenced by it, not at the same time, but um, with some like slight offset based on different things. So um, if, we, if we look at this, this would be like a simple condition and it, this couldn't be anything. I just took the time interval because it really is the simplest one and it's nice to, you know, uh, be a placeholder for any other condition that your particles might happen to uh, get applied to them. So you see at frame 30 um, something happens and you know they move to a new group in this case it could be anything else it could be starting of a mission it could be fragmentation it could be some velocity in some direction or anything like this so uh, what i want to do is to not have them all transition at the same time but to have a bit of a delay and i want to have this uh, quite free form like a uh, very simple thing which can be applied anywhere uh, independently uh, of any other thing like very versatile so uh, the first setup i'm gonna do uh, the simplest one is just with a, a random and i'm using tp5 here but this can really be done in any version these things are quite basic haven't been changed in a while so random and a threshold so the idea here is that i will use the random at a co in a per call mode which means that put to 100 which means that a new random seed uh, random value in the range between 0 and 1 is going to be created per each particle and per each time sample which here is um, per frame so so this means that um, each particle is going to get a random value like between 1 and uh, between 0 and 100 and then I will test if this value is inside like 0 and let's say 5 and to combine, like to just compound this condition on top of the original one, I'm going to use an end. And connect the particle here. So the effect of this is going to be that at frame 30, the particles are going to start gradually going into the... condition and you see there is that one even remaining till the end so I can simply say here 25 and that's gonna happen much faster you can see here so if I say 50 it's basically a coin flip so particle starting throwing like each particle starts throwing the coin at uh, frame 30 and you see that like at frame 37 from frame 38 actually we just have this one left here and this just means that in a per frame it has thrown the coin eight times and all the eight times it has been heads if we say that like tails is inside 0 to 50 heads it's out is outside so it has thrown the coin the coin yeah eight times and uh it has been all the eight times it has been uh heads but as the time goes by the chances of uh, just throwing heads diminish so over time all the particles are gonna get inside that um, uh, interval so eventually you know the the bigger the probability here the bigger the bigger that interval is uh, the faster the particles are gonna eventually get fall inside it their seed uh, and uh, the smaller it is the slower they're gonna fall inside it and it's an elegant way of creating this gradual thing another thing that I use all the time is you know I can copy this thing over again and expand the end so this can be augmented with um, per particle probability so if I switch this to animation and if I say 95 here now this would mean that the condition is going to be true only for 95% of the particles and I use this a lot to just uh, leave some things unaffected by some by a certain uh, event by a certain you know condition that I want to have 
So I'm creating some dynamics, you know, something happening to the particles, and I use this to just make it happen to some of the particles. Again, like a very simple thing. Um, good thing about all of these things is that you have the seed here that you can change, and this is gonna um, alter the distribution. So if you don't like the way your random stuff gets composed, you can just change the seeds. Now, a very important thing to notice is that since all this stuff is happening per uh, time sample, it does matter how many samples you have here, which means that if you have um, created your simulation like this and you're, in, you're happy with the look, and then you decide to change the sampling here, the look is gonna change just because now everything is gonna happen much faster because instead of um, throwing the coin one time between frame, like between the neighboring frames, the coin is gonna be thrown 10 times in this case. Uh, when samples per second are 240 because I have, I think, 24 FPS, yeah. So you have to really keep this in mind. Now to avoid this and to actually have more of a control on the way the whole thing happens, you can notice that here I have... Uh, let's make it 10 maybe. There is a linear, um, it's a linear process, so the thing starts and, you know, they disappear in a kind of a linear fashion. If I just make this affect all of them. So, yeah, the whole condition uh, covers particles in a linear way. The yeah, the last ones linger a bit longer, means the statistical variation. So if you want to do something like uh, make a lot of the particles go into the condition first and then um, less and less over time or, you know, the other way around, you can actually make, uh, make a curve that can do this. So I have cleaned up and uh, to make it o happen over time, we are going to need a timer node. Now this of course can be done in, a several, in several ways. I have done in um, plenty of ways in setups with something like reset the age when something happens and then do the probability stuff. But um, timer is you know kind of compact. You don't need to reset age. You don't need to meddle with it. So it's handy. Now the idea is that we start the timer when our um, previous condition uh, turns on. So so yeah, this uh, since our previous condition is just a time, time interval, that's what's gonna start the timer. Gonna connect the particle, and then um, I have to put in the frames here. Let's say a hundred frames. Uh, it's cool that the timer is giving us on now all these nice inputs, the, including the time relative, which is the normalized uh, time which the particle has spent in the timer, like from zero to one. So I need to connect now the particle to this one. So as um, you maybe know, you, you don't connect the particle on the two sides of the timer node. So particle goes into the timer node and then on the other side, like everything which gets controlled by a timer node needs to get this particle from here. So do this uh, and then we are not gonna need the end because that condition works here. So I will need the curve now and I will make it animation on a float node. So let's say at zero it is something little and at 100 it is one. Okay, so this is our curve. And I will use the time, the time relative to um, drive the time of that curve. So basically to sample the animation of the curve at a certain point in time. So I'm going to use that, do this with the value to time node. So value to time is going to take the timer relative, time relative, which is zero to one. So uh, I'm going to get value from zero to one and I'm going to produce time between zero and a hundred frames which is the length of the animation on the curve node. Just gonna connect this here, 
and connect this to the threshold 2 and this to the on input here so now if I play this animation back stuff is gonna happen over the curve but this is not really visible because my default keyframes are linear so not much of a difference there but if I change here the tangents uh, and I also need to yeah have this set to animation so basically each of the particles is gonna get a different random seed uh, for the age at which it's gonna cross over it's gonna like turn on this condition and I'm just gonna sweep uh, the timer is gonna sweep through 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 the particle and at each point where the particle finds its threshold it's gonna jump over so let's make it something obvious so let's make it like increase quickly in the beginning then be flat then increase again quickly at the end so it, nothing happens in the beginning of course then uh, At frame 30, you see a lot of particles cross over, then there is a slowdown in the pace, and then again towards the end, a lot of parts, uh, particles cross over. Actually, gonna make this a bit faster, just so we can see it. And you see how it works slow, fast, yeah fast in the beginning and slow then fast and these curves you can paint in any way you feel like you can make like a slow curve it's gonna be slow you can make a fast curve whatever So obviously this is a setup which is useful when you need some like precision control. I use the more simple setups more often than the more complex setups, but this is nice thing to have because um, yes, it does happen sometimes that you need this kind of a thing. Um, pretty much, yeah, often happens actually. So this is nice um, when you want to have something that happens over time. Um, but um, it is uh, actually very useful to uh, take something uh, to take this uh, probability process happening not just over time but uh, depending on some of the parameters of the particle let's say the velocity or the size the size one for example is very useful because you can do fragmentation like um, when some condition happens start fragmenting f the smaller pieces first and then um, as time goes uh, get to the bigger pieces also so let's do this next and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the size I will actually make them different size like let's say 10 with 80% variation and make the whole thing display as flakes because flakes actually show the size uh, but then should be fine so you see like there's bigger ones there's smaller ones so, okay so I want to get the size and I want to make um, the let's say I want to make the smaller ones get faster in the uh, in the condition and then the bigger ones to follow so um, this is something that uh, is very useful for fragmentation for example like fragmenting sending to a volume breaker first the, like the really small ones then the bigger ones uh, or if you want to start emitting from something you know it's nice to to like let's say start from the bigger ones then include the smaller ones uh, something like this so again I can get the size I can normalize it again so load the black box float for the range I know it's 10 but a lot of times I don't know I just uh, show it in the debug log and you know check out what happens 
uh, and I overshoot here a little just to not get like one and zero values okay so uh, this this is gonna be between zero and one and I can straight connect this there so let's see how this would look um, this also is gonna be need to be zero and one yeah so you see when the frame 30 hits the f bigger ones uh, because in zero to one the bigger ones are gonna have the highest probability they um, are gonna get sent to the condition first and then the smaller ones so if you want to reverse this you just need a uh, one minus a um, that's the usual thing like when you when you have a normalized value in the zero to one range you want to reverse just uh, do a one minus that value and now if i play this back you'll see that the smaller ones are gonna get in the whole thing first and then like the ones that are gonna be remaining are gonna be a bit bigger ones so um if i um the last thing would be that if i wanna uh, alter the speed of this i can just expose the value of the maximum value of the random here i can just get a float and i can simply make it um give me seeds instead of zero to one zero to let's say make it give me zero seeds and zero to five so let's see what this is gonna produce you see this produces a much slower thing let's say if i make it from zero to point one this whole thing is gonna happen very quickly actually a bit too quickly let's say make it 0.6 so you see this is this speeds the whole thing up make it 3 is a bit slower so uh, the reason for this is of course that if the particles um, if the seeds that are like, generated go at like 2 and 2.5 and have a bit uh, a lot of range beyond one then it's going to be less probable that they fall into this um, zero to one specific point it's like just uh, more of a more of an opportunity for the seed to be generated somewhere outside of that interval which just means it's going to take more time like more coin flips until uh it the seed gets into the that small interval so it's cool that you can uh, use this to change the speed and i use this as i said like yeah with sizes with velocities um uh, just anything that for example you know have uh an explosion and have some friction that gets applied so uh, you can use the velocity so the smaller pieces get their friction applied much later than the bigger pieces and yeah the bigger pieces generally start slowing down earlier than the smaller pieces and you can uh, twist this thing around until you get a distribution that uh, works for you and you know like work uh, looks nicely composed and yeah this is really something uh, i use these things combinations of, of these in all my setups pretty much so i hope it's going to be also useful for you and yeah see you next time